Okay, physics, uh, motion maps. So we have one other way that we can describe motion, which comes up once in a while, and it's subtly different. So let me talk about the importance and how to represent these so you get accustomed to this. Sometimes we call it an oil drop diagram, and I'll explain why in just a minute. So um, so the idea is that we can represent motion sort of in a different way. So, it, uh, so imagine we have a car. Here's some reading that I provided for you. So it uh, is, describes it as well. But if we have a car that's moving along, that uh, we can pretend that car is dripping oil, say, every second. And then we can look at the ground and we can say, well, what is the pattern of oil drops that car leaves behind as it moves along? So if it's moving at constant velocity, I should have a regular series of drops of oil. And if it's speeding up, I should see those drops getting further apart. And if it's slowing down, I should see those drops of oil getting closer together. So, so that's the that's the core idea. And there are a, a couple of, um, sort of important distinctions, though, between how we usually draw things. So, so let me switch to it and try to explain that to you. So, the um, so far we've been looking at motion. Right? We've been drawing these sorts of diagrams. So we can say, well, I might have some position versus time, <clears throat> and I have a car that's getting steadily further away from the origin, and it looks something like this. Or I'll have velocity versus time, or I'll have acceleration versus time. But notice that time is always our x-axis. So the key distinction, though, in a motion map, so if I'm describing an oil drop motion map diagram, that what I have is not a timeline, but I have more of a number line. So this is representing displacement. So now this is displacement. So if I have something moving at constant, constantly getting further away, my velocity versus time is going to be constant. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, if he's moving in the positive x direction, I'll say this is zero and this is whatever, I don't know, 100 meters. And all along here, I'm going to have a, is going to be displacement. So it starts out here. I'm going to label this as a start point. So otherwise I have no idea. And then one second later, it's going to be here. The next second later, he's going to go just as far to be further. The third second, be here, fourth, and so on. And so at constant velocity, these are all going to be represented by dots that are evenly spaced apart. So if my dots are getting closer together, right? So if I have a, a motion map that looks, looks like this, and I have dots that start far away and then get closer and closer and closer, this is the motion map, or this is the, tr the distance traveled like every second for something that's slowing down. So this represents acceleration or negative acceleration, and, and this would represent constant velocity or zero acceleration. Um, we'll add in, in one more complexity to this is sometimes we like to put little vector arrows on here to show something. So in this case, I'm gonna say this is gonna show velocity. So you can, do, you can show acceleration if you wanted to, but I'm gonna be showing velocity here. I'm going to say, well, on each dot, at that point in time, what is the velocity of the car? Well, if my car is moving, it's going to have velocity going in this direction. And the length of the arrow is going to be the same for all of these. Right. So I end up having these arrows. They all have the same length. Notice my spacing is the same, and my arrows have the same length, so it indicates the same velocity. So I can show that here as well. Say, well, what's my velocity here? Well, I'm going to have this much. What's my velocity here? Well, I'm going to have less. What's my velocity here? Well, less, 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 and less. Right, so as you slow down, your velocity becomes less. Usually what I do, so these arrows are kind of a hassle to draw. So when I'm looking at a position graph, which this is, this is always showing me position. Um, when I'm looking at position graph, I draw an arrow that's about halfway to the next dot. So I'm halfway to the next dot, and then notice how automatically those arrows get smaller. So again, if I'm showing velocity, if I'm showing acceleration, I can't do that, right? I have to think about it differently. But if I'm showing a velocity, I'll just go halfway to the next dot, which is a handy way of doing things. Okay. So far, it seems pretty simple, but we're going to get some goofy things. So, uh, so what happens if I stop, right? So, so if my car is traveling along and it comes to a stop, I'm going to end up sort of having a puddle of oil, right? So the, the way that we represent this is by going vertical, right? So if I ha have a car that moves along, say, uh, say here's my displacement graph. So it's going to move along at constant velocity, stop for a little bit, and then accelerate from there. Right, so it's part of a smile, so acceleration. Uh, so this is time. So if I want to show this on a motion map, well, I'm going to say this is my origin, this would be zero, this is going to be x. 
I'm going to have something that starts at constant velocity, and every second is going to get further away until I get to whatever value this is, right? So notice there's no correlation between my x-axis on this. So there's a correlation between my x-axis here and my y-axis here. So um, anyway, so when I get to this point, I'm going to stop. What happens when I stop? Well, I'm going to sit still. And so to represent that, I'm going to just put pile dots on top of each other. So this is something that's stationary, right? So the position hasn't changed, but now he's got one second further at the same position. And then he's going to start accelerating. So I'm going to start out small, and I'm going to increase the distance between my dots. If I want, so this represents something that's going at constant velocity, stands still for a few seconds, and then accelerates away from that. If I want to put velocity vectors on here, I'm going to draw a vector which is going halfway between, halfway between, halfway between. You can decide whether you put an arrow on this this uh, this last one or not. I mean, are you, is he screeching into it or not? I don't know. But if you put one here, you probably shouldn't put one up here. So anyway, so then when he starts up, he's going to have, I'm going to go halfway between, halfway to the next dot, halfway to the next dot, halfway to the next dot, and so on. And I end up having a map, a motion map, or all drop, oral drop, drop diagram that represents this this position time drop. <clears throat> okay, again, start, end. I'm going to be careful about that because you can have something that's the opposite. So last thing I'll mention, right? I can have something that's going the opposite. So say I have a position time graph that looks like this, right? So I'm going to start away from the origin and work my way back towards it. So what's my motion map going to look like? Well, I'm going to have my position that I'm showing here. Again, it's not time. Be careful. I have my position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start far away now. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to label this as my start point. And I'm going to get steadily closer to the origin. Imagine those are all evenly spaced. And then I stand still for a little bit. And then it's going to get steadily closer to the origin until I get there. Imagine those are all evenly spaced. And if I wanted to, I could put arrows on this. Um, but this is, this is a handy way of describing things. So um, sometimes this is described a little bit differently. Instead of having oil drops, I could pretend I have a flashed um, strobe light, for instance. And I'm seeing a picture like every second. And that's another way of doing the same sort of thing. So what's the position at every second? So these are handy. So in one dimension, these are pretty straightforward. I'm going to ask you to start looking at these in two dimensions. So what happens to something, right? So what happens to a, to a ball when I throw it in my two dimensions, right? So this is x and y. My two dimension map is going to look something like this, right? So you know how to do this. Um, and you've seen these sorts of diagrams before. We're just going to give it a slightly different name. We're going to call it a motion map, oil drop, or strobe light. All means the same things. And uh, just be careful because this axis is not time. A lot of people want to make it time. It's not time. It's displacement. Hope that helps. Bye.